Hello, everyone, and welcome to our fourth webinar on Copilot for Microsoft 365, all around extending Copilot. We are really thrilled to be here with you today, so thank you so, so much for joining. Before we dive in, I want to go over our agenda for today. We'll cover some quick introductions, and then I'll give a recap or overview of Copilot for Microsoft 365 to make sure we're all up to speed, no matter where you are on your Copilot journey. Then we'll talk about how we can understand its value before I pass the mic to discuss extensibility, connectors, plugins, Copilot Studio, and more. We'll leave time for questions, but please do use the Q&A function in here to drop your questions along the way. My name is Caitlin Kelly, and I'm an Adoption Change Management Consultant with Valorum Reply. I'm focused on the people side of change, and Copilot really is one of those tools that benefits from in-depth training and engagement. I'm joined here today by some amazing folks from both Reply and Microsoft, so I will pass it over to Jose to introduce himself. Thank you, Caitlin. Uh, my name is Jose Nawaz. I am a Cloud Solution Architect for uh, Copilot in M365 here at Microsoft. Very excited to be here. I've been here at Microsoft for five years and since the beginning helping large organizations with uh, transforming the way they work. Started with teams and transforming the way we work today, allow for remote work and all the benefits. And today I'm very excited to help many of those organizations transform the way we work with Copilot. Thank you for having me. Again, my name is Herman Fashinsky. I am Microsoft 365 Senior Developer, and I'll go through the uh, Copilot Custom Extensibility today. And I am Matt Carter. Um, I'm a Senior Technical Technical Consultant and Developer. Um, I've been working in the Microsoft staff for uh, around 10 years uh, now, and uh, we'll be focusing on uh, Copilot Studio. Awesome, thank you so, so much. And to just introduce ourselves a little bit more here at Valorum Apply, we are a Microsoft partner with the M365 ecosystem at our heart. Whether we're working on SharePoint, Teams, the Power Platform, Viva, and now Copilot, we're really invested in what Microsoft can do for you. We're a Microsoft Solutions partner receiving all six designations, and we've been lucky enough to have our hands on Copilot for a while now. We're also part of the Global Reply Network with over 175 consultancies around the globe, each with a niche specialism. So we have the eagerness of a small team with the backing of over 15,000 global nerds. As I mentioned before, this is our fourth webinar, but if you missed the others, you can catch them on demand with our Valorum Reply YouTube channel, and you can be sure to register for any upcoming events at valorumreply.com slash events. Speaking of upcoming events, we have a webinar focused on the developer toolkit, talking about tools like GitHub Copilot on March 21st, so please be sure to register for that session as well. I'll have this QR code up at the end of the session again. Before we jump straight into extending Copilot, I want to review Copilot for Microsoft 365. Copilot on its own is the name of Microsoft's generative AI tool. On a personal level, you can access through this through what used to be called Bing Chat. It's AI powered search and content generation. When you add in your organization's E3 or E5 license, you add in commercial data protection, ensuring that your data and your interactions stay safe when leveraging Copilot on the web. On top of this foundation come some of the other Copilots, including Copilot for Microsoft 365, which brings in security and compliance, permissions, data, context, and your applications. Further building on Copilot for Microsoft 365 are the Copilot for Business functions, including sales, service, or finance. These take the Copilot for Microsoft 365 foundation and really levels up the tool to bring in built-in, ready-to-go data integrations with Dynamics 365, Salesforce, ServiceNow, or SAP. But to zoom in on Copilot for Microsoft 365, the tool for everyone, regardless of business function, 
It's powered by OpenAI's GPT-4 large language model, in addition to the data, content, people, files, and other information in the Microsoft Graph, the data and information you already have access to. Copilot embeds into your applications, understanding their function to be fit for purpose. And you can leverage the internet in addition to this content, really rounding out the quality of responses. To look at it from 30,000 feet, this illustration showcases how it's all working in the back end. In your applications like Word, you may ask Copilot to generate an FAQ doc based on a file within Project Unicorn at your organization. First, it shoots the prompts to the graph and semantic index for pre-processing or grounding, doing research to answer, what is Project Unicorn? What is your organization? What's the context for this reference file? Who is requesting it? And what do you mean by FAQ? It translates this into a response for the large language model, turning data and tokens into natural language. It then sends it back to the graph for post-processing, ensuring alignment of the response, and then it gives it back to you, the requester within the app. Pretty amazing stuff that's happening in about 30 seconds. So we know it's a powerful tool and we know how it works in theory, <laughs> but what does that mean for you or your organization? Understanding how to best leverage Copilot means understanding its value. And to do that first, we need to look at the state of work today. Microsoft Teams and the advent of hybrid work really unleashed a new wave of productivity in organizations. But now we're at a place where 64% of employees don't have the time or energy to do their jobs, partly because they are spending 57% of their time communicating and only 43% of their time creating, the work that drives innovation. And Microsoft has identified that the lack of time and energy to do work has led to three critical issues in the digital workplace. First, we have the broken meeting, then we have the information labyrinth, and then we have our blank page. People are in too many meetings, they can't find what they need, and they're too exhausted to create meaningful work. We know that AI can directly impact these issues. Early studies in AI at work um, are really promising. A recent report published by the Harvard Business School and Boston Consulting Group found that generative AI at work led to a 12% increase in task completion rates, and a 25% decrease in time spent completing tasks. So this measurable improvement in efficiency can lead to cost reduction for companies. Organizations can leverage AI over other costly systems and promote the factors that lead to revenue growth by leaving that critical space for work that drives innovation and brings the business forward. And this is all just baseline generative AI. So when we turn back to Copilot for Microsoft 365 and how we make the most of it, there are real three key pillars to success. The first is adoption. We need to know the baseline tool, bring it into the flow of work and understand the use cases. Once we've done that, we can look at extending. What additional data can we bring to the table through graph connectors and plugins? And then we look at how we can use tools like Copilot Studio to bring in other business data and build our own Copilots. Well, now that we understand the value of Copilot for Microsoft 365 on its own, I wanna hand it over to someone I could not be more excited to welcome today. Jose Navas from Microsoft has been an exceptional partner to work with for a long time now, both personally and professionally, and his experience within this space is invaluable. So Jose, I'll go ahead and pass it over to you. Thank you so much, Caitlin. Can you hear me well? Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So uh, it's important to start and acknowledge that AI is no longer a passing trend. It is a strategic imperative. Companies that neglect AI in their enterprise strategies risk accumulating what we call digital debt, and with that, falling behind in competitiveness. You mentioned, Kaylin, numerous studies, and I have also some other studies by reputable organizations such as McKinsey, HBR, IDC, that consistently demonstrate the business value of AI in organizations. The consensus is clear, AI delivers substantial return on investment. In fact, IDC recently revealed that organizations achieved 
a an average return on investment of three and a half dollars for every one dollar invested in AI in a average period of 14 months. And hopefully after the presentation today, you see that we can take those three and a half dollars and make it even larger with Copilot extensibility. When we think about generative AI in the context of work today, we envision a user with uh, having a very smart personal assistant. We think about that user being able to do things like quickly summarizing emails or generating high quality content in Word or PowerPoint or getting answers to what they uh, need in natural language. And although those are great efficiency gains, they only represent a fraction of the whole potential. And here is where Copilot extensibility truly shines. When you feed Copilot with your business data, imagine leveraging your CRM, ERP, file systems, and knowledge bases and embed those with AI. Suddenly, we leap from those individual user efficiencies to large organization-wide efficiency. And these leaps are very visible. They're impacting productivity, decision-making, and overall success. And to make this more real, I wanted to share with you a story from one of our customers, Air India. They came to us with a scenario that many of you might find relatable. These are weekly meetings that they have to discuss the rhythm of the business and to make decisions. And imagine these weekly meetings where operations executives gather to analyze the business. And in one of these meetings, an executive could say or could ask, uh, what has caused an average flight delay out of our New Delhi airport to increase 15% last week? Suddenly, the room fills up with anecdotal comments, factual statements, assumptions, even flawed inferences. And after hours of discussions, decisions have to be made, some on the fly, and some have to be postponed for further analysis. After implementing a set of connectors and plugins, which we're going to talk further later, Air India employees and executives have flight performance information at their fingertips. How? Through using simple natural language using Copilot. In the screen here, you see how an executive is using Copilot and is asking basically, use an external system and show what are those flights that have more than 150 minutes delay, or those airports, sorry, that have more than that delay. Suddenly, executives go to meetings, better prepare, armed with all the data that they need, and this is a uh, profound impact. The effort that used to take many days or hours, now it's done in just a few minutes. But there's more. Copilot can even generate pre-read documents for executives joining this conversation to ahead of time, be aware of all the in-depth analysis, hidden insights, key performance indicator, so they can focus their time on critical areas on and making uh, informed decisions. And because Copilot is conversational, they are able to dig deeper into the data and ask problem questions. Or Copilot can help with follow up and related tasks. In this example right here, we see how one of the executive is going further by asking Copilot to draft an email to those managers at these airport locations with those delays to explain a little bit about why are these delays happening. Copilot extensibility has led everyone at Air India to show up better prepared, their processes are highly actionable, and they are leading to more resolution. So we've seen how Air India used Copilot extensibility, but let's define what Copilot extensibility means. It's basically enhancing Copilot to interact securely with platforms outside of M365. And to understand this better, I love this graph. This graph illustrates the concept of Copilot extensibility 
First, you have on the Y axis skills, and then on the X axis, we have knowledge. The smaller pink rectangle represents the combinations of skills and knowledge of Copilot for M365 out of the box. Extending Copilot then means adding more skills to Copilot or adding more knowledge that Copilot can use to resolve your prompts. Think about skills as the abilities that Copilot has to, for example, summarize emails on Outlook or create presentations on PowerPoint or draft content on Word, etc. By using plugins, we can add much more skills to Copilot, allowing it to interact with other platforms. For example, if you have a ticketing system outside of M365, connecting this platform using plugins would enable a user to update, create a ticket, and find information about a ticket through Copilot using natural language without having to go into that other platform. In turn, when we look at connectors, Copilot knowledge using graph connectors, Copilot out of the box can leverage information stored in OneDrive and SharePoint Online, information that you as a user have already access to. We can extend this knowledge of Copilot to leverage key information that live in other platforms to enhance that knowledge. Consider, for example, a platform, an external platform to M365, where all of your HR-related policies are stored. Since this is outside of Microsoft 365, interacting with Copilot might not retrieve this information that's aligned to these policies. However, if we use graph connectors, we can index this information stored in this HR platform into the Microsoft Graph. Once indexed, Copilot can, it's able to tap into this information. And now we are turning Copilot into an authoritative source to answer HR related questions. So where is the value of plugins? Plugins are great to connect with third party uh, applications, platforms, especially in those scenarios where you're in need of retrieving real time business data, or also when you are asking for Copilot to perform actions on behalf of a user in an external platform. When we look at connectors, they are great to connect to external knowledge in platforms. They can bring this information, index, and use some of the great uh, features of the Microsoft Graph and search in Microsoft. Also, graph connectors have been here for quite a long time. They not only enhance your experience with Copilot, but your overall experience with Microsoft Search and M365 in general. It's an added value when you index this information into the Microsoft Graph. You can use some of those same security compliance policies that you can use in Microsoft 365. And before I uh, end my intervention here, I wanted to leave you with this slide here, which basically talks about your options when it comes to extensibility. We talked about plugins and connectors, but how can you go about enabling those? There's multiple ways to do it. You have a no code option, which is a set of connectors and plugins that are able for you to use. You will be able to see many of the platforms where, that you worked with and where your data relies. If you need to customize a little bit those connectors or you don't see a connector in those uh, libraries, then you can go the low code way, which uh, Mark is going to talk to us about more later. And if you want to customize that even more, you might have to go to uh, Azure AI Studio or other platforms. So with that said, uh, I'm going to pass it over to Herman to talk more about extensibility in detail. Thank you. Thank you, Jose. I will take control uh, over deck. Right, uh, yeah, so now I'm going to talk a little bit more about Copilot custom extensibility. So, uh, as Jose was mentioning, um, Copilot could be extended uh, in a several ways, including uh, plugins, and even with the plugins, uh, there are a variety of options we can choose from. 
One of them is Teams message extension. Teams message extension is uh, one of three significant Teams uh, extensibility options available for a while uh, alongside with the bots and tabs. Um, historically, message extensions was not really um, uh, useful for users uh, because it was not really clear uh, where to execute them and what will be the end result. And with the copilot, it seems to be uh, it will be the game changer. But what is uh, message extension? Message extension is ability to enrich Teams experience in context of search bar, uh, message bar, or even the message. It comes into two different forms, actions and search. Uh, with actions, uh, people are able to execute different commands in a context uh, of a specific Teams component. For instance, I can communicate with Matt uh, about some development task, and uh, I can simply create a Jira or Azure DevOps ticket uh, with the description for the message without leaving uh, Microsoft Teams. Uh, with the search, it's pretty obvious. It's basically a search. And uh, I'm able to uh, perform a search with uh, several parameters or filters against a third party system without leaving the teams. Uh, for instance, I can communicate with Caitlin about the products that we are selling to our customers. Uh, I can search for them and lay out the message with the uh, basic description and uh, images. You may also notice that I have a small asterisk uh, that is saying that uh, action message extension is not available for Copilot. And just to avoid confusion, um, I just want to clarify that um, while it is not officially supported, the beauty of messaging extension is that uh, they uh, leverage the team's ecosystem. That means that when you start uh, leveraging search message extension with a Copilot, you can search for a specific item, and then you can continue with uh, task modules and other Teams components to perform several commands. Uh, usually, uh, we were building message extensions with the Microsoft Bot Framework, which comes with tons of uh, options. And uh, one of them is a native authentication and single sign-on support of your organization, uh, action skills that I described recently, and also control over uh, rendering so that you can uh, change the way how users see their uh, data results depending on a different context. But with that, uh, your developers need to be familiar with the uh, bot framework and how does it work. Uh, so to help with that, Microsoft uh, announced the open API support alongside with the Copilot release uh, that helps you to boost the development. Uh, it comes with some limitations, but overall, uh, you benefit from having no Azure subscription and Azure bot registration uh, dependency. And what is more important here is that you have no dependency to a specific programming language or SDK. Um, one key component uh, that I have to highlight is a security and compliance, and specifically, uh, developers' responsibility. Uh, while Copilot itself is secure and compliant, and it's managed by the Microsoft uh, Defender, Microsoft Purview, uh, and all the data stored in Microsoft 365, like Outlook, Teams, uh, SharePoint, is protected. Uh, with the plugins, you'll live in the boundaries of Microsoft 365. With that, you have to follow your security uh, data classification policies, uh, cybersecurity frameworks, and overall uh, development security uh, best practices. Uh, but how Copilot uh, decides whether or not your plugin is suitable for context of a prompt? Uh, this is where uh, plugin orchestration joined the game. So when users uh, start talking to Copilot within Microsoft 365 chat, uh, Copilot looking for uh, all the plugins enabled, it performs reasoning will, with help of native language processing to build different intents. Uh, uh, it later on map those intents to plugins available and execute and receive the results from third party system. And as a result, uh, Copilot able to generate summary and lay out it into Microsoft Teams. And to make sure that your plugin is selected, 
by Copilot, uh, there are several recommendations to follow. First and first, uh, Copilot is an app, and every single app has a description. So uh, make sure to provide clear description across all the arguments about all use cases, um, just to make sure that Copilot can leverage its NLP capabilities and run your plugin at the highest score. And also in 2024, we're all familiar what is prompt, prompting strategies, uh, prompting libraries. Uh, so uh, this recommendation will be pretty much the same. So make sure to uh, specify several um, uh, prompts into the app description, uh, not only to uh, make it uh, useful for your users, but also to uh, help Copilot to see uh, what are the use cases of your plugin. And the last thing is uh, you need to understand the uh, debugging capabilities of Microsoft 365 chat. Uh, it is not really clear how Copilot uh, will select your plugin because there is no explicit binding between the actual prompt and the scale. So that's why you need to see uh, how the execution process looks like. And with that, you are able to enable Microsoft 365 uh, debugging mode. And the second option uh, that I want to cover is the Microsoft Search. Uh, this is actually opposite to plugins because uh, when you uh, deal with the plugins, you uh, perform search against third party system and live in your boundaries. With the uh, semantic index in Microsoft Search, you actually ingest the data from third party system into Microsoft 365. And it comes with several benefits uh, like compliance, uh, but also it may lead to some uh, delays with the data refresh. Uh, you can bring your data with the help of graph connectors. Uh, some of them are pre-built by Microsoft partners like ServiceNow or Salesforce, Oracle and SQL Server. And with that, you don't need to have heavy development skills. You just need to be familiar with the Microsoft search governance. Uh, and the process will be uh, pretty streamlined and seamless. But if you need to uh, bring uh, the data uh, from the system that is not part of uh, standard connectors, you still uh, have several options to do that. Uh, Microsoft offers you a graph connector SDK uh, powered by um, gRPC protocol running as agent on the Windows virtual machines. Uh, and also, you're still able to use the graph APIs and any computing resources like Azure, um, GCP, uh, or even AWS um, to build uh, your uh, custom ingestion logic. And as a result, you can uh, access uh, this data within the boundaries of your organization with, uh, with help of Copilot. And uh, in the same manner as I was talking about the plugins, you still have a little bit of responsibility of what you're doing with the graph connectors. While with plugins, uh, you have like 100% responsibility of the uh, security and compliance. With graph connectors, your data reside within the boundaries uh, of your um, organization, uh, but you're still responsible of managing the access to each individual item managed by the access control list. And with that, I will pass it over to Matt talking about the uh, Copilot Studio. Thank you, Herman. Um, I'm trying to take control and I don't see the presentation here. Caitlin, did I do something wrong? We can see it, but I'm happy to guide you. Through. OK, I wanted to make sure that we could see that there because I was a little concerned. OK, um, yeah, I can't I can't see like what slide we're on currently for some reason. So hopefully I'm following along just right here with the slides. Oh, there we go. That that works. Now I can see it. Thank you. Yeah. Um, perfect. Um, uh, let's see. Yes, perfect. Okay, so with the evolution of AI um, over time, um, we can see how building AI is becoming more accessible for a larger group of users. Um, 
Early on, conversational AI was restricted to very specialized uh, vendors and data scientists. Um, then we saw it expand to in-house professional developers. Um, a little later came the introdu introduction of tools for the citizen developer, such as Power Virtual Agents. Most recently, new tools are available that allow just about any business user to build AI experiences. And one of those tools um, is Microsoft Copilot Studio. Uh, within Copilot Studio, you have a variety of conversational tools at your fingertips. Um, using these tools, along with generative AI, you can build your own Copilot, customize Microsoft first party Copilots, and manage those experiences right within the same platform. Um, for key extensibility scenarios, you can build manual topics where you can control the flow by uh, the flow of turn by turn dialogue. Um, you can call your APIs to get information or complete tasks, and you can build uh, plugins with hundreds of um, pre built connectors to common backend systems. Um, you can also plug in your custom Azure services, including Azure conversational language understanding question and answering, and uh, Azure OpenAI service, as well as many more um, to enhance your, your Copilot. Uh, inside Copilot Studio, you, you get a few studios um, or workspaces to help build and extend Copilot. Um, there are three studios, two of which you probably are already familiar with. Um, these two do not necessarily live inside Copilot Studio, but are fully integrated with it. The first, Automation Studio, or also known as Power Automate, can be used to inject process automation into your conversations um, right inside your Copilot. Uh, the second, uh, Admin Studio, or also known as the Power Platform uh, Admin Center, is where you can manage deployment across environments um, and maintain compliance and governance for your custom Copilots. Um, the third studio, which is the building studio, is where you can create, test, and deploy your custom conversational co-pilots and extensions. And this studio consists of four, four um, particular workspaces. Uh, the first space is used for building and managing your plugins. Um, and then there's a space where you can leverage generative AI to help build out custom conversations and topics. The third space is where you can manage publishing of your Copilot to the channel of your choice. Along with Microsoft Teams, there are several channels available to deploy your custom Copilot. And those channels include Facebook, Slack, and Twilio. And last of all, the, there's a workspace that provides analytics and insights um, into your custom Copilot, such as uh, usage. As mentioned, uh, using Copilot Studio, you can extend and customize first party Microsoft Copilots with your own enterprise scenarios. Um, these include, um, uh, these first party Copilots include Microsoft Copilot, Copilot for service, Copilot for sales, and many more. And by extending these first party Copilots, you can now better control the conversation um, accelerate productivity with your custom automated workflows and bring in your own business data. Um, currently, the options for extending Microsoft first party copilots in Copilot Studio come in the form of two types of plugins. The first is conversational, and the second is AI. Um, inside Copilot Studio, makers will be able to see all those available plugins um, from other copilots. Um, and import them, but they can also create brand new plugins. <clears throat> um, a conversational or an AI plugin can include uh, message nodes, uh, any of the 1,000 plus built-in Power Platform connectors, uh, generative AI answer nodes, Power Automate flows, AI prompts, and, and many more. And along with extending Microsoft first party copilots, you can also leverage the generative AI features of Copilot Studio to help you build your own custom copilot um, where you can completely control the experience. Um, so, inside uh, Copilot Studio, there's 
three generative AI features um, that you can leverage. Um, the first is generative answers, and this is to help you generate multi-turn answers from an organization's content in real time. The second, generative uh, actions, um, is used to generate dialogue and take action by chaining plugins. And the third is generative building, where you can actually use AI to help build, design, and modify Copilot topics through natural language. Let's dig a little bit deeper into what each one of these uh, generative AI features are. Um, with generative answers, you can simply point to your knowledge sources, those that you want your Copilot to understand, such as your company websites or your SharePoint sites, or even your OneDrive files. Um, this allows your Copilot to instantly deliver rich, multi-turn, generative AI-powered conversations with the end user. Um, you could point to, for example, your HR policy documents, your HR SharePoint site, or even an HR system external to M365 via a, a connector plugin. And then you can ask it, what is the leave policy? Um, and then instantly you get an answer relevant to the question um, and, and specific to your company's policies found in that content you provided it. Um, this might sound a lot like a Microsoft Graph connector, but the main difference here is that there is no custom code required and no setup required. You just link to the, co the content you want to use, and then generative AI can use it to respond to your, your user's conversa conversations. Um, also, this content is always up to date as your co-pilot will always use the latest published content. The next one, uh, generative actions, um, it leverages the built-in generative AI to dynamically chain uh, multiple plugins together. Um, it will automatically um, slot fill further details to get the information needed for the particular task. In other words, you just point to the plugins that you want to use um, and it determines what plugins or plugin best fits the question from the user. And, and it could be a custom, a connector, a, one of the pre-built connectors, or it could be a combination of multiple connectors. Um, an example of this shared at, at Ignite demonstrated this in a, in a custom co-pilot built for a cruise company. Uh, the builders used the built-in weather connector, one of the existing power platform connectors, and also a custom plugin that they built for connecting to their own cruise databases. The end user could simply could then simply ask what what's the weather like where I'm flying next Wednesday? And that, that generative AI um, would dynamically chain the, you know, those two plugins together to respond to the user's request. Um, it would do it by asking for additional information required, such as where they were flying to, and then it would provide a nice adaptive card and the weather forecast, and then sharing potential excursions or activities available at the destination. Um, the last um, generative AI feature is the generative builder functionality. And with it, you don't have to manually author your topics. Um, you can use AI assistance to, to build the topics. You simply give the topic a name, um, a description, or a purpose for the topic, and then AI instantly builds it for you. Um, where Azure bots um, could, could have taken months to author and Power Virtual Agent bots took maybe days to author, Using this prompt authoring in Copilot, Copilot Studio, it now will only take hours or even minutes to author these. And you can use assisted authoring for the topic creation here that I mentioned, um, but you can also use it for uh, response generation and adaptive card generation, and there's many more um, available. So in summary, Copilot Studio exposes a full end-to-end -end life cycle for your Microsoft first-party Copilot extensions, as well as your custom Copilots, and all this within a single pane of glass. You can build those experiences using built-in generative AI, the custom and pre-built plugins, and also integrate them with Azure AI services. And then, and then after it is built, you can test right inside that experience. Um, you can manage its deployment and monitor its usage, and all this from within the same web experience. Amazing. 
Thank you so much, Matt, Herman, and Jose for this uh, you know, incredible deep view into extensibility. Um, but you know, for a lot of organizations after seeing this, the question really is, where do we start and where do we go from here? As we know, Copilot is so much more than flipping a switch. There is plenty to assess prior to jumping into extensibility. So whether you are just starting out with some leadership enablement, getting yourselves ready technically with a comprehensive governance strategy, or running a pilot or full rollout, we are here to support you to get that adoption under your belt, that first pillar we talked about. And then from there, we can work with you to understand your extensibility use cases and where you can derive the most value, whether that's through plugins, whether that's through graph connectors, or whether we need to start looking into some of the complexities involved in Copilot Studio. So we covered a lot in a short time, right? But that was incredible content. So just as a brief overview, we talked about how we understand Copilot for Microsoft 365, its inherent value, and then how we turn up the dial on that value through the various methods of extensibility. And of course, making sure that we touched on how we can help you along the way. I want to stop here. I see only one question in the Q&A so far. And of course, it was, are we able to send a copy of this deck after the session? Yes, there's a lot to sift through, and we will be following up after the session with both the slides as well as the recording. So you can share internally uh, with your colleagues and uh, you know follow up with any more uh, questions or information. And I just want to say thank you again so much to Jose, Herman, and Matt for joining me today. Uh, again, really incredible information, and this is just the beginning, right? So everything they talked about are just sort of jumping off points to help us better understand our extensibility options and where we can go from there. But the use cases in each of your organizations is going to really vary dramatically. Our emails are listed here, um, so please do feel free to reach out to any one of us to discuss what might be available to you. I've also got the links to our previous webinars, ranging from just the introduction to generative AI in the workplace to what information security and protection you need to uh, you know, how you can enable adoption and of course now our extensibility. And I've also got the link to our registration page. So uh, if you need to register for any upcoming events, if we're running any more webinars, we've got the developer productivity webinar on the 21st with that QR code there. Um, so please feel free to register if you're interested in that. And of course, reach out today to any one of us to see how we can help you get started. Since I don't see any other uh, questions in the q and I will go ahead and say thank you so much to everyone for joining us today. We really appreciate your time. Again, reach out with any questions. We would love to discuss what Copilot can do for you.